How do we read Amazon? Is this the first sign of a truly slowing American consumer? Sure. Good morning, Brian. Thanks for having me on. So, you know, the Amazon report was certainly pretty, uh, pretty nasty underneath the surface, right? And I think the, the bigger problem with Amazon was the the deleveraging in the model, right? So let's just take a step back here. They reported Q1 operating income that was 31% below consensus. They guided the high end of the June quarter, 56% below consensus. But a lot of that was very Amazon specific. I'd actually take the opposite point from the standpoint of the health of the consumer. It's, and this is true of both Apple and Amazon earnings calls. They went out of their way to talk about the health of the consumer actually still remaining fairly okay. You know, inflation is certainly continues to be a key concern to the extent prices remain stubbornly high. I think there's clearly the fear that the consumer will slow down. But as of now, I actually think we're getting somewhat of a blessing from two of the largest facing consumer tech companies globally that the consumer actually is hanging in there. Yeah, but I guess, Jared, hanging in there is is good, but it's not as good as the consumer is growing. The consumer is spending more how much are inflation and interest rates, I guess we'll call it the, the dreaded double I, how much are they hitting the sector altogether? For sure. So let's take a step back, right? I mean, to your point, interest rates are moving higher. The 10-year yield is approaching 3%. That's a significant move considering yields were about 1.5% to start the year. The Fed's pursuing hawkish monetary policy to combat inflationary pressures slowing global growth. It's impacted tech disproportionately, as you just mentioned earlier, right? NASDAQ's the worst subsector uh, year to date, given concerns on the impact of consumers, slowing IT budgets, and a lot of these work from home COVID beneficiaries reverting. But I would certainly just caution reading Amazon as a proxy for the health of the consumer. Remember here, you know, the world is reopening. And if you look at e-commerce as a percentage of retail spend, you know, that's going to be slowing as people, you know, are no longer stuck in their homes. And don't forget also, you know, the competitive landscape is certainly more intense than it was two to three years ago. I think a lot of you know, tech investors sometimes uh, forget that there's competition is heating up. You look at a lot of the omni-channel competitive landscape, right, with Walmart and Target. Uh, they're not backing down. They're investing heavily in their online digital ecosystem. So, you know, I actually think Apple is probably a better proxy, right? When you come here, you look at Apple's revenues growing 9% year on year against the 50% comp for a very high-end smartphone. I think that's a better proxy for the health of the consumer. Yeah, so what's key to you going forward, Jared? Obviously, this was a huge week. It was the first week, I think, in a long time or ever that all the biggest names came out in the same week. So now it's over. We know. All right, what's your next big data point? What are you watching for either from companies, from markets, technical levels? We're kind of going into a vacuum. we got the Fed next week. That's kind of a big deal. What are you watching most closely going forward? Going forward, I think the, the, the question will continue to remain sort of the, the health of the consumer and how do we think about potentially moderating inflation prints over the next two to three months. To your point, we've got the Fed next week. We had a more benign CPI print a few weeks ago. And the CPI comps are getting really, really difficult here, right? If you think about how inflation stepped up last year, the comps are going to start to get pretty significant, pretty difficult, and the Fed does that, right? So does that act as somewhat of a silver lining here? You know, I think the other thing to think about for, for tech here is, you know, the market has come in considerably. Valuations across all of tech, you know, that's a comment across MFANG, semiconductors, software. It's, they've really come into fairly reasonable levels, right? MFANG as a group is trading at about, you know, 11 to 12 times forward yep. EBITDA. Google is trading at a S&P multiple. And the, the one thing that's also yep. important to note, while there's been a ton of selling pressure as the rotation continues out of tech, the one person, the one group that's not selling is private equity. We've had $50 billion of software M&A in just the last few months. So I think that private equity put is very much alive and well and certainly, certainly something to keep note of.